All right, yes, indeed. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back again to our Mix What I Like Live. I'm Sarah Ball, happy to be your host here on Black Power Media and joined by some very special guests, uh, not the least of which starting off with is uh, Nia Holston, who is, among many other things, a staff attorney with the Abolitionist Law Center. I'm, by the way, a big fan of the ALC. Uh, so shout out to them beyond just our special guest here, uh, 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 Ms. Holston. Uh, but she, uh, she's born and raised in and around Philly. She is a licensed attorney in Pennsylvania. She graduated from New York University School of Law, where she was uh, a Root Tilden Kern public interest scholar, participated in civil rights and youth justice defender clinics, led an organization that trains law school students to represent children at their school suspension hearings and organized around racial justice issues on campus. Prior to joining ALC, she worked as a public defender at the Defender Association of Philadelphia. Before law school, she worked as a paralegal at the Equal Justice Initiative in Montgomery, Alabama. So welcome to you, uh, Nia, and good morning. And also welcome and good morning to uh, our other special guest, Brother Siddiqui, Brother Shep Olugbala, who among many other things is a professional child care worker and former Hunter College Black and Puerto Rican Studies Department major who studied during the 70s under such noted scholars as Dr. John Henry Clark, Dr. Marimba Ani, Dr. Luis Nieves Falcon, and Dr. Yosef Ben Yokinen. That's a, that's, wow. Let that just sink in for a quick second. A Bronx, New York na native brother Shep began his lifelong work as a community activist as a 19 year old member of the New York State chapter of the original Black Panther Party, where he worked as a black student union organizer and reporter distribution manager for the Black Panther Black Community Newspaper. Today, at the age of 66, he continues that revolutionary work as a youth counselor, lecturer, and workshop facilitator for the Community Survival Program, National Black Panther Alumni Association, and with the Universal Zulu Nation by utilizing hip hop culture as a tool for organizing and community building. Welcome to you, Brother Shep, as well. And I do believe we have also with us uh, Brother Russell Maroon Schultz, the uh, third activist, longtime struggler, and of course, <laughs> heir to the name and the legacy. Uh, of Russell Maroon show. So welcome to all of you. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. And uh, yeah, just appreciate you being here. Let's let's get into it. Um, oh, well, we'll bring him back as soon as he, we can. Uh, Sister Nia, good morning. I'll start with you. I know we wanted to uh, um, uh, get into a discussion of the current condition and situation around Russell Maroon Schultz. Uh, so please take the floor and uh, correct anything that I got wrong in the intro and uh, uh, let us know what we need to, to get to. Good morning and thank you for having me. I uh, appreciate this forum and appreciate what you do on the on the show. Um, so as you said, I'm from the Abolitionist Law Center. We uh, represent Russell Maroon Schultz. Um, on his uh, uh, on his medical transfer petition. Now, what the medical transfer petition is, it's it's um, more commonly known as compassionate release, um, wherein where someone has a terminal illness um, that they can be released to a hospice care facility um, to be comforted um, by their loved ones um, as they head toward their passing. Um, we filed that petition in August. Um, and after two hearings, that petition was unfortunately denied. Now, I think it's important to kind of share a little bit about what the medical transfer statute requires and um, why we think that should be changed and why um, it's important to highlight how difficult it is for people to um, receive relief in, in Pennsylvania. Um, the medical transfer statute, um, you know, requires uh, people to have a terminal illness um, to be declared by a doctor, to have less than a year left to live, um, to um, have that person uh, not be able to walk, 
um, to have that person find a hospice care provider um, that will take them and provide hospice care services for them um, and then require notice and an opportunity to be heard to every person who has some supposed stake in um, the medical transfer petition. And upon that, you so upon the filing of that petition where we receive support letters um, from a whole host of people, we had um, several support letters that we submitted to the court, um, several letters from uh, the hospice care provider um, that uh, Mr. Schultz would be going to. Um, after we met all the statutory requirements, the judge who used her discretion that is authorized by statute, despite the fact that the Philadelphia DA, who is um, usually the main person, uh, the main entity in opposition to a medical transfer a relief, despite the fact that they did not oppose the position, despite the fact that the Department of Corrections did not oppose the petition, um, as is their discretion as well. Um, the judge in her singular discretion, despite all of the letters that we had of support, despite doctors information that clearly um, Mr. Schultz uh, has been recommended for hospice treatment. Um, despite all of that, despite the fact that in the state of Pennsylvania, um, you know, the le state legislature has talked about the need to provide um, for more compassionate release for people, um, despite the fact that um, everyone knows um, that um, that we clearly show that he is not an undue risk of estate. He would be on electronic monitoring, unfortunately. Um, the judge in her discretion just said, um, I believe in mercy for everyone, but I don't think that I would be doing my job as a judge if I granted Mr. Schultz that mercy. Mr. Schultz, who, as we know, has thousands of supporters all over the world, who has inspired so many people with his writing, who has um, done so much to um, influence how the movement has grown, right? And so I think it's just important to provide that background and that context for um, what is, for the situation that we are in right now. So just to clarify that unfortunately he is qualified uh, medically and in terms of his, his deteriorating health for for this these um, provisions. Uh, uh, so electronic monitoring even if someone qualifies to be in mm -hmm. hospice is seems you know an additional anyway so i just anyway okay, thank you for that uh uh brother shep welcome uh good morning and please uh add on anything that you 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 would like to uh uh about what's going on and what what you'd like uh, those of us in in audience to to do or to know or how we should respond Yes, good morning, um, Jared. It's good seeing you again. And um, Likewise. Thank you for um, having us on. Um, basically, just to add to that, um, we definitely are disappointed, <laughs> to say the least, in that decision that um, Judge Kai made. But um, we're still proceeding. Uh, we've had setbacks in the past, uh, particularly when, uh, when Maroon was in solitary confinement, you know, five times he was denied, but we got that done. So we're moving forward. Uh, we do have a strategic plan. I'll get into that a little bit at, later in terms of where we're moving forward. Um, but um, our objectives remain the same. Um, Maroon is our expected elder. Um, he needs to be home. There's no reason why he should uh, spend his last days um, behind those walls. Um, he should be with his family with his great grandchildren, his children, and um, be able to um, continue being a guiding light to the young people in the community. So um, we, we'll get into the details as we go on, but um, we're in total agreement that this was a decision that uh, was unwarranted. Right on, thank right on. you. Uh, Brother Russell, good morning, welcome to you. Uh, good to see you again as well. Uh, wanted to give you a chance to jump in and offer any introductory uh, remarks in terms of, uh, you know, the situation uh, uh, that that we find ourselves in and what, what you would like our audience here and ourselves to, to know and, and uh, maybe to do or to think about or what we what, what our orientation needs to be this morning. You, are you here? Well, first are you and foremost, yes. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. I just want to 
thank you guys for uh, allowing us this space on a platform. Um, and uh, as you said, I am uh, my father's son um, by name and heir and uh, doing uh, similar community work that uh, he's done in the past and uh, obviously trying to um, liberate him along with the minds and souls of our community and the people. Um, but yes, again, um, as Brother Shep pointed out, we're here to bring information around my father's case and the strategies that um, we're using to try to liberate him and all of our political prisoners. But we're gonna focus today on the campaign Free Maroon. Thanks again for the platform to do that. No, of course. Um, so, so what? Let, let's let's talk about that. The the campaign to free Mar Maroon. Where 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 is the campaign in terms of these next steps? Uh, are you know what's what's the plan? What should we be? What should what you know? What would you like us to do? Um, uh, or are there any other details as to to that you all are aware of as to why it's being held up? That is his his at least release into hospice, et cetera, uh, or anything. Yeah. Um, yeah, Jared, um, basically my role in the coalition, um, to free Russ Maroon Schultz. Now we put capital letters in the word now, cause, um, we want him home tomorrow, <laughs> you know, is that, um, I deal primarily with the outreach, uh, media, which is why we're here today. <laughs> and, um, you know, making sure that we have the funding that we need to um, continue in the campaign. Um, Strategy-wise, uh, we're looking at um, trying to really get a lot of professionals involved in this. Uh, we actually have two campaign letters that are going on, uh, one specifically dealing with clergy. Uh, Maroon is a uh, highly spiritual um, elder, um, you know, based in the faith of Islam. And he uh, basically wants us to look at that that particular area in terms of bringing, um, whether they be rabbis, um, imams, uh, pastors, reverends, um, they could be um, Buddhist priests. It doesn't matter at this point because uh, we're looking at life. We're looking at um, the importance of mercy and reconciliation and all those things that need to be put into place. And we know that our um, religious community is um, well equipped to deal with this. Um, you know, just recently there was a, um, a whole um, congregation of interfaith pastors that went out for Sunday out of Coley. And um, we are looking to get as many of them to sign our letter for clergy as possible so we can present that to the judge so she can see that um, the spiritual community, the religious community is, is behind this, uh, understanding that um, Maroon needs to be home. You know, we don't, we don't have to get into just the monetary reasons. I mean, what it takes to house somebody behind those bars doesn't make any sense for them to even be there <laughs> for that reason alone. But um, looking at the other things um, with the spirituality, we definitely want people to um, sign on to that. Um, if you know any pastors or you're part of a church or a synagogue or anything on that level to um, definitely have your um, congregation learn more about that. Um, as um, Russell the Third mentioned, you know, we have a lot of elders, political prisoners that are still in prison. And um, this can hopefully snowball into a, an effect where we can get them all home by the end of the year, which is actually our goal was to bring them all home in 2021. So um, the second um, letter basically is dealing with those professionals, um, celebrities, um, people with names. Um, in the past, um, like when, when um, Maroon was on solitary confinement, 
Um, we had Bishop um, Desmond Tutu that signed on. Um, we had a lot of different names that came on. So we're looking to bring a lot of them back, you know, including folks like Danny Glover and different people that have weight, whose names carry um, influence to other celebrities and other um, professionals. So we're looking for teachers, doctors, lawyers, um, athletes professionally, um, entertainers, performers, anyone whose name carries some weight that's willing to um, put their name out there for the compassion that's needed so that Maroon can come home to his family. Um, other than that, um, it's a matter of us getting into the community. Uh, we have a lot of events scheduled coming up. We have a um, curb fest, you know, which basically um, you mentioned about hip hop in my um, bio, but we're going to have artists and DJs to follow up on the porch fest that actually um, Russell Schultz III organized um, earlier this summer. And we're following that up with Curb Fest, where we're going to set up DJs and information tables on the block, on the street, in the hood, you know, where our community is. Uh, far too often, we um, tend to go out to um, marches and demonstrations downtown or at the courthouse and, you know, different places like that. But we neglect our own community. So we're going to make a special effort to do that, not just in Philly, where the next one is coming up on the 18th um, of this month, but all across the country. I know Boston is going to do one. I believe Oakland is organizing one. So, you know, by this time next year, there'll be curb fests all over this country where we can um, bring our community into this whole struggle of bringing our freedom fighters home. Right on. I, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I was, um, I was gonna. I was gonna. I was gonna. Did somebody else want to say something? You got it. <laughs> no, I. I was gonna ask. Uh, you talked about religious organizations. Have you reached out to any um, uh, is Islamic organizations like like Care or some of those other ones? Um, we we we, we are in the process of doing all of that. Um, okay. I know that you're probably familiar with some of our um, former political prisoners, um, Jihad um, Abdul Mahmed who actually is the chair, uh, co-chair of Jericho Movement, mm -hmm. um, Jaleel Montekin, who just recently came home. And uh, we're all working hard on this international tribunal, which is going to bring up this whole issue of following up on the 70th anniversary of We Charge Genocide. And of course, our political prisoners are you know, included within that. But um, they are of Islamic faith. We recently, some, this summer, had a large um, Islamic program from Imam Jamil Alameen, uh, formerly known as H. Rap Brown. So a lot of emails are familiar with this. It's a matter of we want to get those signatures down and really increase um, not just the awareness, but the action to put their weight behind getting Maroon home. So um, the letters basically were just finished up recently. Um, you know, that's the whole process, making sure all the dots are dotted and the T's across and all of that. But we're ready to move on that right now so, to all the um, interfaith um, communities that we can reach out to. And then and are you encouraging. So I just wanted to quit. Are you encouraging people to go to the Facebook page to find this information or is there a specific or, or is, it, is there another uh, uh, preferred website where people can get the letter uh, that they should sign to? to yes, we, we have a um, we have a tree, a link tree that people can go to. But the Facebook will lead you to that link tree. So okay, you can get great. information on everything that we're doing. Uh, we basically have meetings uh, on Mondays. Um, I mentioned prayer. Uh, Mondays and Thursdays, uh, we've been involved in praying, for, uh, having a prayer for Maroon on those two days and on any day that it rains, uh, which, of course, we've been doing a lot of recently, you know, with the storms and so forth. But we all know our uh, rain is, you know, a blessing. <laughs> And we want to extend that blessing to bring Maroon home. So um, right on. I can um, send you that link tree. Should I send it to your email? Or? You could you could even put it in the private chat right now and I'll post okay. it. Or, or okay, I'll also put up the, the Facebook page there as well mm -hmm. uh, and put that in the chat. So, so but send me whatever in the private chat. And I'll okay, post I'll send it. it to you now. All sure. Right. All right, right on. Sorry, Kaba, would, go ahead. No, that's no, all right. We, we were just talking about before you all came on the first hour. Um, how, you know, organizations like 
Black Lives Matter uh, are branding themselves um, and so on and so forth. So um, what what about those organizations? There have been some criticism of them for not necessarily speaking up for political prisoners. Um, have you have you reached out to them or have you heard anything from from them? I know that th there's a difference between national and local. So just asking more so on the local, because I know that there are people organize, organized on a local level there in Philly, particularly from Black Lives Matter, who are doing doing the work in the streets. So what about them? Um, real quickly, so, Mike, and, um, I recently saw a letter from um, Black Lives Matter. You know, I generally, I think I hear some of the background. Um, okay, I generally um, don't use the um, acronym BLM because for us veterans, that's Black Liberation Movement. So we make a distinction between the Black Lives Matter. But um, I recently saw a letter supporting political prisoners that came out. I don't know what faction or what area it came from. But uh, what we talked about earlier about being in the community, that is so key. You know, there should be a Black Lives Matter office in every community so people can have somewhere to go to help organize. And that doesn't exist yet. And hopefully they will wake up and get that done. But um, yeah, you're absolutely right. Philly is doing some work, a lot of work, and I'm sure somebody else is somewhere. We just don't know because it's not really an organization. And somebody else can just tap on that. Well, on the ground in Philadelphia, uh, there is not just movement, but there are two chapters or more but two outstanding chapters in Pennsylvania in general um, that actually do do work around political prisoners and um, have supported my father um, on a multitude of different levels. Right now, I'm working with a brother from Black Lives Matter Philadelphia, Brother Devrin, um, in order to bring legislators to the table as they have work that they're doing with a group of organizations that work with our legislators. And Brother Devin has been gracious enough to lend their support and expertise, and this is specifically Black Lives Matter Philly, um, in that process of bringing the legislators, our lawmakers, to uh, these dinners that are planned um, around uh, addressing our aging prisoners, not just specifically Maroon, but our aging prisoners in general. So uh, yes, to answer your question, Black Lives Matter Philly is definitely uh, in support of uh, my father, but also uh, people who are um, part of their original uh, Black Lives Matter Philly, like Sister Yane, um, who is a, a, a go-between, uh, a lot of times between uh, Maroon's organization and a lot of other organizations um, to sync up Black Lives Matter Philly with the work that's needed and the requests that are needed from them. So between Brother Devrin and Brother Yane, the answer is definitely yes. Black Lives Matter. In fact, Matter I need to shout out Sister Yane too, uh, because uh, you know she put this together. She she instigated this discussion as well. So so shout out uh, on on that on that as well. Um, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, Russell. I, you know, please continue. I just before I forgot, I, as I had already done, I wanted to to. Shout out your name. No, no, no. Thank you. I was rambling, but the answer is yes. They're involved. Nah, nah. Right on, right on. Uh, uh, could we come back? You know, please jump in and say anything else that needs to be said, any of you. But um, uh, Nia, I did want to come back and ask you specifically to say a word about the Abolitionist Law Center. Uh, I am a huge fan of... Uh, that whole operation uh, for a number of years uh, and even once got sent on a mission to the National Archives uh, to find stuff on uh, uh, Brother Russell. 
to 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 help out. And I and I want to say publicly, I like that. I want to be sent again. My if my proximity to the National Archives ever helps again, please let me know. Uh, that was a lot of fun uh, and very revelatory, given how much information I just happened to see that was on Russell. That's already known. Like there, there was a lot of documents, uh, uh, you know, about surveillance of, 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 of the, 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 the Panther party chapter in Philadelphia, him in particular. I mean, it was wild, but anyway, uh, please talk a little bit about the ALC if you would, uh, and then say anything else about this particular case, uh, if you, that you'd like to. Okay. Thank you for that. Um, so the abolition law, uh, abolitionist law center, um, was, uh, born and inspired by out of the struggle, um, of political and politicized prisoners um, who have been held in cages in um, the Pennsylvania DOC. Um, and our mission is to work um, to end the wealth and race-based system of punishment in the United States. And to do that, we employ a three-pronged strategy of lit litigation, organization, and education. Um, so we work to free people from cages. Um, we um, work on a, uh, their appeals. Um, so we just had um, a major victory a couple of weeks ago um, where Arthur Chetawayo Johnson was released after spending 51 years um, incarcerated um, in the state of Pennsylvania. Um, we work to expose the brutality of the system through litigation, but also through public education work, um, you know, speaking out on panels, speaking to the press um, by highlighting what's going on behind uh, prison and jail walls. And Overall, we organize uh, to strategically work to dismantle the system um, of mass incarceration, but the punishment system overall. Um, and so um, our docket is growing. Um, I was actually just hired as a staff attorney in June, um, along with another individual. So I, um, like you said in, in, in my bio, I'm from Philadelphia, um, and I'm excited to be working at ALC in Philadelphia, um, our office. Um, was primarily headquartered in Pittsburgh prior to this. Um, and so I'm just excited to continue working. Um, I think, um, you know, speaking on Maroon's case specifically and speaking um, again about the medical transfer statute, I think it's really important to talk about how this case highlights the cruelty um, and arbitrariness of the of um, this system of mass punishment, right? Um, where you can do everything right for years, right? You can be misconduct free um, and you can be subjected to needless cruelty um, by the state, right? You can be subjected to solitary confinement, which is beyond torture, right? Solitary confinement uh, straight for 22 years, right? And so I really think um, that we have to question how just not just the medical transfer statute works and how it provides so little relief for so few people. And in fact, back in 2015, um, I think the DOC released some stats that only three people um, per year were being released under this medical transfer statute. And it's increased some since then, but that's still not enough, right? Um, so I think we have to question how this entire system works, but um, how the entire system that led to this works and how the politics of punishment and retribution don't make us safer, how they act as a, a tool of control for oppressed peoples and how we as a, a community, as organized people need to organize against it. Right on. I wanted to ask um, too, you know, and and of course I'm I'm under no illusions here, um, you know. I know that the carceral state is 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 nationwide and to some extent even uh, global, mm -hmm. but something particular about Pennsylvania and Philadelphia in particular. Um, mm -hmm. I was just thinking about um, what last week was it Sirhan Sirhan who killed a Kennedy, mm -hmm. you know, got got off, you mm -hmm. know, from mm -hmm. from a life sentence. And here we have situations all over, you know, in other places where political prisoners are not are not released, but particularly uh, Pennsylvania and even more particularly uh, Philadelphia seems to be uh, totally uh, egregious and, and and really just vicious and ferocious as it pertains to you know political prisoners specifically. What 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 is it about? You know, is there something about Philadelphia about Pennsylvania in general? Um, that you can put your finger on that specifically for, for Nia, but then um, anybody else? Um, well, I, I mean, I think it's um, a lot of things, right? I think it's um, the history um, that we know, right? The, um, you know, the long history of repression, 
um, in the city, you know, um, long before um, the move bombing, right? Long before, you know, Frank Rizzo, long before all of these various issues, right? And how all of those systems are all are very interconnected, right? So the policing system, the criminal justice system, all of the prison system, all of them are interconnected in that way um, to produce these kinds of results and reinforce each other, right? So all of those systems of, of oppression that we know about um, that um, in all of these um, larger historical events that have um, specifically um, implicated Philadelphia in it. I think um, that's what makes Philadelphia unique. Um, I think our overall landscape, um, you know, democrat demographic wise, um, makes uh, Philadelphia unique. And I think um, the state has been um, unfortunately particularly successful at um, repressing um, folks from Philadelphia and repressing people of color, right? Um, particularly at the state legislative level, making it very difficult to get um, legislation passed that um, impacts our people positively, right? And so I think it's a whole host of reasons, um, but I think it's something that, you know, we're continuing to fight back against and, and work towards, and we're aware of it, aware of all these different struggles. Anybody else um, if I might just add one thing to that, that's very rarely spoken of. Um, there's the criminal element in the government of, of um, Philadelphia, historically. Um, you know, just amongst, um, in the community, sometimes we joke, we say that Capone tried to take over Chicago, you know, with organized crime, but they actually did it in Philadelphia. Hmm. <laughs> you know, and wow. that's been something that's definitely been part of all of this. You know, and wasn't there a judge? I'm sorry to jump in, but wasn't there a judge uh, uh, that got caught for like basically selling people? Wasn't that in, wasn't that in Pennsylvania? I mean, uh, yeah, Pennsylvania. Oh yeah, it was. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm sorry. Just go ahead. I just wanted. No, to you know, but you know, I mean, just just in terms of just history. Um, I know I have one comrade who actually went to a, a, a court case for Mamiya, and while sitting in there, you know, in his past, he had been um running stolen cars from Boston to um, Philadelphia before he got conscious. And he recognized folks amongst the police in the gallery that were part of that whole ring. <laughs> and it was like, wow, you know. So, I mean, this goes all the way back, you know, as Nia has said, even, you know, during the time of Rousseau and before that. You know, so that's just something that's not really talked about, but it does exist. And then the last thing, uh, going back to you, Nia, uh, pr prison gerrymandering. I, I I I saw that that was something that was an issue. Um, could you talk about that? Because I know it had, I think it had been like repealed or something, and and that's also something in in, in Pennsylvania. Right, right. Um, so there. Thank you, and thank you for um, mentioning that. Um, mm -hmm. So last week, um, the the redistricting commission um, with, uh, recommended that uh, people who are incarcerated. Um, should be counted for um, redistricting purposes um, in their home districts and the places where they come from. And so what we know about prison gerrymandering is that, you know, despite the fact that um, people who are incarcerated are not able to vote, despite the fact that there are statutes uh, saying that they cannot vote, that um, they are sent to these uh, far-flung locations in the state where there are no uh, people of color, right? and where the prisons are built, um, which is primary rural white communities. And then they are counted in those locations um, for, for redistricting purposes, for bringing funding to those areas, um, for increasing the amount of legislature, legislators who are in those areas, right? So last week, um, the redistricting commission voted on a resolution authored by uh, a, senator, a state senator, Joanna McClinton, um, who uh, put forward this resolution to end prison-based gerrymandering. Um, and the uh, redistricting uh, commission, there were five people on that commission, um, five state legislators, um, two Republican, I uh, believe they're sorry, there were three Republicans and two Democrats. One Democrat, the chair was a swing vote and he uh, voted in favor of, uh, of that. Um, and so there's still um, some things that are worked out and there's still some things we're disappointed with, right? Um, so in the resolution, it specifically exclude, excludes people who were sentenced to life without parole, right? So that's something that we're not in favor of. That's something that we're, we wanna continually fight back against. Um, 
there are there are some other things that um, you know some of the Republicans who are on that commission um, are trying to put forth um, to examine um, to limit the scope of of that. Um, but it it is an, an incredibly big deal, um, and it is something that um, we're excited about um, and has the potential to um, change things in in Pennsylvania um, and change things in the right direction. You know, just to add to that, it's the same situation in New York, where mm -hmm. basically we had we can identify five communities that, um, you know, South Bronx, um, Brooklyn, like Bed Stuy, um, Harlem, you know, those areas where the majority of Black and Brown people live, that makes up the majority of prison population of state, and so it, it connects to that same thing. You know, they get the votes, they get money, <laughs> because they don't count them in the census here in the city, they count them in those little towns that are upstate, those prison towns. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, all that also contributes to what they call um, gentrification because you move that population out and then um, you get more um, Europeans moving in. You know, we call it ethnic cleansing, which is really what it is, you know? And so, yeah, it's it's all over the country and we see that, but, you know, just like um, ALC is fighting that in Philly, uh, we have groups here in New York, like rap and um, vo vocal New York, you know, Voices New York. You know, there's different groups here that have been up on that, you know, and dealing with that. So, um, yeah, that's a different issue, that whole gerrymandering thing you're talking about. Um, if I may, I just want just two quick things. Um, when you mentioned about what we're doing, we also have a cultural wing. We're about to release um, a second album for Maroon coming out. <laughs> And so we have um, a lot of cultural artists and focusing on the youth that are putting music, um, poetry, art, visual art, all those things together. And that's also a big part of our campaign that we're doing. Right on. Just just a quick shout out to, to, to some heavy hitters we got in the audience in addition to our regular uh, remixers and and uh, BPM chat crew. Uh, we do have, uh, I see... Uh, well, brother Netfa, I see, is out there shouting you out to his homeboy from Philadelphia, Russell. Uh, and uh, we also have uh, brother Daruba Ben Wahad in the chat, who uh, uh, is is offering up his comment here. Uh, uh, if anybody wants to respond to, you're welcome to, of course. Uh, and shout out to all of them. And it's unfortunate that I have to give him a shout out and recognize that he's also watching. It's, it, and, and Brother Shep Don't do will it. have his Don't own do it. conversation for you. Don't but do it. It, it. Brother Kalanji is out oh, there. And, yeah. and, and uh, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, he, 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 he just wants to let you know that, that he's out there and got, got some conversation for you. And, and that Baba Russell, Brother Russell, that uh, you, are, you have to come back to the Remix Morning Show at some point soon to talk more about this so uh uh anyway uh uh i don't know if anybody has a particular response or or to 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 what brother deruba is offering here in terms of uh uh revisiting failed strategies in this historic moment or uh, uh i don't know if why anybody would but if you want to respond to to brother kalanji uh uh or the fact that I've, I've i've brought him up uh please do uh, uh but anyway yeah go ahead oh we got a delay all right russell i'm gonna let that catch up I, yeah, we got a i think we got a delay there or something uh but go ahead. When, I'm gonna unmute you. But go ahead. I just want to let that catch up. That lag is is pretty severe. I would love to. I would love to address. I would love to address all three of them, um, kinda in one fell swoop. Uh, they have all um, supported and done work um, around. The, So I just want to say that they have all supported my father. Um, and what I would like to point out is specifically the work 
a brother Nefa, and specifically in the context of it being totally non-performable, totally non-theatrical, totally just the work uncut raw. And we need more of that. If you want a vision of how Maroon would like to see the work, check Brother Nefa and his work out. Right on. Thank you very much. And uh, uh, and I, I actually co-signed that. I think any of us who've been around and, and seen uh, Nefa do his thing would recognize that uh, uh, as well. Um, Good people, as we sort of push towards a close, I'm not rushing, but I but but as we start heading in that way, I want to make sure any any uh, uh, anything that's left unsaid gets said that needs to be said, or any uh, uh, thing that hasn't been said gets said that needs to be said, including again anything about follow ups, next steps, um, and and uh, I'll say to to all of you, uh, uh, Russell, brother Shep, and and Nia. That all of you in all of your capacities are uh, permanently extended invitations to this program and to this platform. Uh, I would love it if we had a regular uh, visit. Uh, I'll just put this out now: a regular visit from from anyone, Nia, you included, from the ALC. We would we love to to support that work. So if we can build on some some of that, we want to consider that as well. Uh, uh, same to you, uh, brother Shep and, and Russell. Uh, but uh, uh, anyway, let me let me be quiet and, and and turn it over to any of you who want to to add on uh, uh, as any concluding or soon to be concluding comments. Yeah, two quick things. Um, yeah, I would like that that invitation. Definitely take you up on that. Um, we can look at that international tribunal that I mentioned earlier. Yes, indeed. Um, yes. You know, we, we definitely can do a program on that. But um, second thing I like to um, just touch on real quickly, um, the statement that um, my comrade Deruba made. Um, there are um, different situations with different cases right now. And our strategy right now with Maroon would be a little different than, let's say, Kamal Siddiqui or Dr. Matulu Shakur particularly since they're all elders now. And so we look at their campaigns are taking different routes individually on how they're dealing with um, getting them home. Um, of course, the whole raising the consciousness of our um, captive freedom fighters overall is something that we were put in the tribunal, or as I mentioned earlier, um, we're in the street, you know, on in the blocks. That's, that's where it needs to be done. That's something that we got away from. I think I mentioned before, you know, the failure of Black Lives Matter. They don't have offices in the community. They don't work in the community. There's no programs in the community. But um, we need to do that. Uh, the brothers and sisters on the block, you know, they're looking for information. Um, a lot of them can't go to a demo or a march because they got warrants and all kinds of other things. <laughs> but they're ready to move. They ask for information. And we have those conversations on the corners. You know, and those are the things that we need to do. That's why I really like the idea that um, Russell Third had come up with, with putting that music on the corners. And we got great responses from that in terms of people. Last but not least, last year during the um, all the marches and anti-police terror demonstrations and all of that, um, there was no follow-up. Um, I did one. They allowed me to speak for like three minutes at one of them. <laughs> and watch the square park. Those of us that were in the party know that generally folks don't like us to talk. You know, that for some reason they think that we're going to take them, their wind away from them. But in those three minutes, I just met, I gave out my email and I said that, um, you know, we need to do that community organized. We need PE classes. And I got swamped with them. So we've been doing that all year. And other people have taken up that mantle. Um, young people are looking for information that's not Googled. <laughs> or not on the internet. They want it from the source, from veterans. And we've been able to provide that on different levels. And um, I think that's really key in terms of the young folks that want to get involved. And they asked, they asked for it. You know, it wasn't offered, but they asked, I mean, it was offered, but they asked, yes, we want to get involved with that. And they've been doing it. And so um, last but not least, um, you mentioned about media. You know, we're welcome here. We're going to be putting a call out. Um, to all media outlets, whether you're a podcast or a radio show or whatever you have, 
um, to get this information out. Uh, we just did a show last yesterday morning um, on WBAI with um, King Downey. And uh, we want to continue to do that. And we're actually training people now on how to do interviews. So we'll have a whole army of folks with the inf correct information that can put it out to the community. Well, right on. on that note, on that note, speaking of Pacifica, I'm, I also have a show on WPFW. So uh, on the 16th, how about uh, we work something out for one of you or all of you to come on and, uh, and also promote what's going on on the 18th. So we can do that as well. Right on. And that's three so Jared, to five Jared, Jared, Eastern can make that every Monday. Yeah, we'll definitely. Yes, I'll right. help. I'll definitely help facilitate that uh, okay. for sure. Uh, uh, and by the way, uh, uh, I'm sorry. Just, just quickly, brother Shep. I also want to hear more about the, the 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 lineup on this album. If you got if you, <laughs> if you got any heads up, I mean, we want to hear about that. And any of them could come here. Brother Kaba can sing with the best of them. We 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 happily welcome acapella. We want to hear from the MCs. If Cats will come on and drop verses. You know. We welcome all of that. So, all right, so, so just uh, hit me up. With, you know, yeah, yeah, we'll definitely do that. Um, uh, I'll get matter of fact. I know Spirit Child, who's on that committee, is listening now. So, um, right on. Let's, let's make that happen. That. So, yeah, okay, for sure, yes, sir. Coaches are well. Yes, indeed. Sorry, Nia. Go ahead and get oh. Mama's biscuits. <laughs> you better stop, man. You better stop messing with me. Wait till we, we reconstitute. We the Wait till we get the band back together. <laughs> we convene the super friends, man, and get them back on there. That'll be a great addition. We're gonna be hating Sunday. and begging for a cameo. Sorry, Nia. Oh, it's all good. It's all good. Um, I just wanted to quickly say, um, just to make clear, you know, although we did suffer um, a setback um, with the denial of the medical transfer petition, we are still. Uh, litigating and exploring different options. And so that is still actively ongoing. And so all of the support, all of the organization is definitely um, helpful and supportive of that effort. Right on. One question I did have for you real quick was, uh, I think uh, Brother Kaba sort of alluded to this, but I wanted to ask specifically around uh, the, the, the uh, that we, we all, uh, anyway, this is obviously a, a different context, but the, the clemency granted to David Gilbert recently by mm -hmm. governor or outgoing Governor Cuomo, uh, do, does that factor in or how does that factor in, if at all, to, to what you all are doing with, with, with Russell? Uh, uh, it, does that does that help? Does that does that not have an impact? What do you what do you think? Well, I, I think um, and I'm not as from uh uh, personally familiar with the ins and outs of the clemency process, but what I will say is that um, I think right now time is of the essence, and um, clemency petitions would have to go, um, you know, before the governor. And the governor has shown that he has not um, been very quick to act on those petitions, right? And so I think um, the governor of Pennsylvania, at least, and so I think that push um, is quite difficult. Um, in in Pennsylvania, and particularly, even though um, Governor Wolf, you know, there is an election um, coming up in the next couple of years. Um, typically, what and what we saw with Governor Cuomo is that it was on his way out of office um, when he opted to grant that clemency, right? And so, you know, we are certainly considering every and and any option that is available to us. Um, but I think strategically, right now, you know, we're looking for what is most expedient. Right on. Uh, Brother Russell, uh, uh, your con the connection notwithstanding, I don't know what this lag is doing or when you'll eventually hear this 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 invitation for your last comment for the morning, but definitely happy to have you and, and have you back on, certainly with the Remix Morning Show as well, uh, 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 whenever that is possible. But I wanted to give you a chance to, to offer any concluding comments as well. You have to unmute. Uh, I think you have to unmute yourself. I don't think he's here. Uh, it's unfortunate. Yeah. You have to unmute yourself. I don't think he's here. I have to thank. I have to thank everybody for the support. And just want to say that to double down on our efforts as our 
freedom fighters and political prisoners are in their last days and we need as much support as we can from all levels. But once again, we want to thank everybody for the support that they have given over the years. But now it's time for us to really bring our political prisoners home and our freedom fighters home and also to join this coming national push to bring them all home. Right on. Thank you very much. Well, again, I just want to thank all of you. Uh, uh, certainly, shout out to Yane again for for uh, instigating this this uh, uh, um, gathering reunion of sorts as well. Uh, uh, Brother Russell, Brother Shep, Sister Nia, thank you very much for coming through. And uh, please, definitely be in touch. Stay in touch. We'll we'll put you in touch also with Brother Kaba for his show and uh, anything else we can do with this platform. Just definitely let us know. Uh, and thanks again for coming through. We appreciate all of you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Take Thank care, you. everybody. All right, good people. Thanks to all of those uh, folks. Please do check the, the link tree here uh, and offer up your support, uh, if at all possible. Uh, we definitely want to encourage uh, uh, as much support as we can going forward for all of our, our freedom fighters and political prisoners and Russell Maroon Schultz. Uh, uh, you know, chief among them uh, as well. Uh, and uh, uh, definitely want to have all of them back. I am a big fan of the Abolitionist Law Center, man. Brett Grody, that whole crew, uh, big shout out to them. Uh, they've been doing great work for a long time. So um, I'm, I'm glad uh, Sister Nia is there and we look forward to, to supporting them as well going forward. Uh, Brother Shep as well. Uh, so shout out to them. Uh, uh, Anyway, brother Kaba, any 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 last thoughts for you for the morning? Anything you got that you can preview for us, uh, for for your show? And of course, as you do that, we will just put this up and encourage folks to support Sister Katia. Uh, continue to do that as well. Uh, and uh, um, but anyway, go no, ahead. Just an, another great show. Um, you know, I really really enjoy it this and uh it's sad news in terms of uh you know where, where we are right now with the legal process but again you know uh the, the struggle continues that's kind of like part of our of our uh sojourn here in this uh in this reality uh mm -hmm. so there's that but uh in terms of monday show it's going to be uh you know they do the, the special memorial day um i'm sorry it's labor day uh programming but i will be putting on my dj hat and i'll be playing some labor related uh tunes as well so you know if anybody has any suggestions you know you can hit me up as well you got any requests you know this is one radio station where you know your requests might actually matter uh black requests matter uh so so, so there's that <laughs> <laughs> it, it's not gonna be a play a generated playlist from you know corporate to play the same nine songs every hour so uh what so is whatever that? You, hmm? Uh, what is that song? I was just thinking of that song. Um, uh, and thanks again to you, uh, Yane, as well. Um, what is, um, oh, how did that song go from from Dead Prez? I've been working all my life, but I ain't got yeah, nothing man, to man, show. So, I ain't man, telling man, you nothing. You don't, you don't already, already know. know. Yeah, I've been working my all my life. Okay, yeah, that's yeah. a good one. I got, I got to edit. Want to run up in the White House and kick? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know which one it is. I think it's the Revolutionary but Gangster, the original Revolutionary but Gangster. It might have been that one, or it was one of those mixtapes. But I got it, so I, I know you're talking. Right about. on, right on, right on. W oh, four. That's what that. it's called. It's called W four. Oh, that's it. Like that's it. That's yeah. it. That's yeah. it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. <laughs> right on. Right on. Uh, uh, so shout out to you. Shout out to to the working people of the world. And uh, I, I can't wait to hear to to hear the mix that you all put together there. Uh, shout out to Sister Katia. Please support her uh, as best you can. Obviously, please support Russell as best you can. Spread the word. And uh, thanks to everybody for coming through. Thanks to you, Brother Kaba, as well, man. Thank you. Another, appreciate you. So as always, like Russell, like Katia, and like Fred used to say to you, we say peace because we know you are willing to fight for it. So peace, everybody. See you all over BPM, 
all weekend long. A lot of great shows, a lot of great programming. And of course, the remix is back on Tuesday of next week, and I'll be back on Monday. So peace, because we know you're willing to fight for it. Take care, everybody. I mix what I like, what I like, what I like, what I like, what I like.